For ER, I have used this uh, CNC that is good for make uh, PCB and uh, cut other like materials like uh, plastic and uh, plexiglass. But uh, when you have to cut uh, something more strong, uh, like uh, aluminum or uh, steel, you find the limitation of this machine. This machine is very good to make PCBs and uh, things like that. So I will keep it uh, for many other years, maybe with some modifications. So I decided to buy a milling machine, a more robust milling machine, the ones that you find uh, on the net uh, with various brands, uh, but they are all made by Sieg, a Chinese company that is sell um, under uh, different uh, names. Sometimes uh, companies that made uh, milling machines uh, rebrand the CEG to make products for the OB market. I have to give some uh, advice on buying these machines. These machines are cheap. First of all, you have to check uh, everything in the machine, any screw, uh, every screw, uh, every connection and all the electrical part. I suggest to dismantle the machine before to start the first time, because uh, sometimes they are poorly assembled and uh, this can cause the rupture of the machine Often the transmission uh, goes wrong uh, for a poorly mounted uh, machine. Uh, after you have to clean the machine uh, in any place, uh, all the dovetails uh, and uh, everything related to a part that moves, uh, because uh, they are very uh, dirty. You have to expect to fix something on these machines and uh, don't rely on the scales on the machine, always use uh, uh, comparators and uh, other instruments like that uh, for taking your measures. Here I show you how to uh, fix the backlash problem because uh, this machine was uh, assembled without uh, uh, taking care of the anti-backlash device uh, the machine uh, had a very big backlash on the y-axis now I'm pointing anti-backlash device Here I'm inserting uh, the screw on the y-axis and I show you the movement uh, on the y-axis. Look at the movement uh, on the y-axis. I have to tighten these uh, two little screws to mitigate the backlash. They weren't tight uh, at all, they were only inside their hole without uh, any regulation. This is uh, how the machine came from the factory. Now you see the movement uh, on the bar is very little. Look at this. Can you see the bar cannot move, tightening a little bit. And now it's okay. The screw moves without uh, dancing around on the on the hole. Another uh, unexpected uh, problem that I found is related to the knob. Look at the the play that the wheel have against the axis and uh, all is caused by the, the key. The key is too little for the slot, so it moves. 
I plan to shim this uh, this key in some way or build another that fits more, more properly, but uh, I will do this in a second time. Some uh, stupid worker that have to be fired have inserted the jib on the y-axis hammering inside the dovetail so the gib have uh, a dent at the end and uh, I'm trying to file down this dent so the gibs can uh, run smoothly on the dovetail I set up uh, a piece of uh, um, abrasive paper uh, very fine and uh, I'm removing the dent and uh, give a nice uh, clean to the Gibbs surface so it can run uh, very smooth on the dovetail of the Y axis this is the result looks so good so clean I'm dismantling um, all the the screws that all the the gibbs pressed on the dovetail then I remove the y-axis this is the underneath part of the y-axis here we have the anti-backlash device for the y-axis a tightening screw here is missing so I have to replace with another one I'm checking for a little screw that I haven't so I put a bigger screw but this is not a problem because it doesn't interfere with the uh, slide of the y-axis I don't know if uh, doing this is correct please uh, let me know in the comments I have to clean uh, the dovetails with uh, some uh, tin sandpaper to get rid of uh, all the wax that I suppose is there to prevent corrosion when the machine is stored uh, before uh, the selling oil at the the dovetails, a nice clean thin layer of oil another layer of oil here this is the gib a nice layer of oil in the gibs too Pay attention to insert the gibbs uh, in the correct way. You can see the markings of the screws, of the tightening screws on the gibbs, so you cannot be wrong. That mm, yes, maybe in this uh, in this way or oh, in the other way. Mm, no. I seem here I get uh, a bit confused but uh, but I found how to mount the gib so now I'm sliding in the x-axis carriage you have to insert the screw okay It's time to fix the screw at the carriage from both sides. Now it moves uh, a little bad, but uh, uh, we don't have uh, set up uh, the tightening screw of the jibs 
I prefer to slide in all the carriage and then set the screws. With a bit of patience uh, we insert uh, all the screws, all the screws in their holes, then we tighten the screws on the gibbs without forging. This is my technique to set the screws. Then we have to tighten the to tighten the, the nut. You have to be careful doing this to not uh, over uh, tight uh, all the screw. So the setup you have done before is messed up by the nut tightening. Here I'm uh, oiling the uh, x-axis uh, uh, gib to reinstall the x-axis carriage. Inserting the, the table the carriage for the x-axis, not the gibbs. The gibbs have to be fit inside. Now I'm uh, setting up the screws on the x-axis gib. These screws are uh, uh, on the front side of the machine, but uh, you probably have to do like me you have to dismount the handle to have free access to some of the screws. And finally, the first run on the mill I know this chuck is not suitable for milling, but uh, I only have this uh, at the time uh, of the video, so I was so impatient to start milling and uh, I fit an uh, uh, 8mm end mill uh, on the drilling chuck and uh, I want to try the machine as soon as possible and then now I'm trying to cut this little round uh, taken from an old printer it's an old printer axis it seems to be a very hard steel but the mills uh, cut very well I am still trying techniques and tools with this machine so expect more video about this, I hope you enjoy, so subscribe and stay tuned for more resources.